Okay, so the last time we saw each other, or maybe the last time we listened to each other, or no, maybe the last time that you listened to me, how about that, uh, we were talking about metathesis, because I can't hear you, right? I can't hear you through your computer, or can I? You never know. It makes you kind of feel freaky and uncomfortable. You never know what can happen. All right, so the last time that we talked about metathesis, I told you that in this video we would look at this a little bit closer, talk about what this actually means, and that you would see that this is no more complicated than what we have been doing. I mean, it seems like the only thing that has happened is that we've taken a carbon and we've added another carbon to it. So elongation every step along the way. So at this point, we've talked about the lithium adding carbons on, the magnesium bromide adding carbons on that we call the Grignard reagent, and then we talked about the um, Gilman's reagent of the copper lithium. Then we went to Suzuki and we went to HEC, which were palladium coupling reactions that chain elongated as well. So now we're at the very end of the show. And this very end of the show is going to use a different metal. We need to talk about what that metal is. And at the same time, what does that metal allow these organic compounds to do? Is this really a chain elongation? Well, sometimes, but not all the time. And you'll see that in our very first example that we do. But this is going to concern alkene, E-N-E, -E, metathesis. All right, so alkene metathesis back in Chemistry 251, you learned that alkenes were carbon double bonded carbons. All right, so this was a whole world of organic. We learned how to name them. We learned how to do numerous reactions with them, water and acid and mercury and, uh, and the peroxy acids and everything else in between. So we've already been kind of acquainted with the alkene family. And here's another reaction that those alkenes can actually do. We didn't talk about this back in the day because this is a metal-based reaction. And we kind of just wanted to keep it at a metal-based reaction. And we lumped it into organometallics for that reason. Okay, uh, alkene metathesis is often called olefins. And that's because this is kind of the old term that we used to use for these types of molecules. But that really isn't used in what I would call today's generation of organic chemist. We now just simply call it an alkene metathesis because that puts our head in the right place. We know that these are alkenes and those alkenes are going to end up doing something. Now the problem, or not really the problem, but alkene metathesis can just simply be done with one alkene. Um, we don't really need more than this. This is all that we need. So the R groups on the left and right can be anything that they want to be. So they can be longer carbon chains, they can be rings, they can be whatever. But we can just take this one simple little O molecule and do something with it and a reaction can take place and a metathesis can go forward. Or what we can do is we can take um, a alkene like this and then in this example I'm going to say R prime and R double prime this can have triple and this can have four all right so what that basically means is that all can be different they don't have to be the same and even over here they don't really have to be the same but I can put a mixture of alkenes in all right, so in version number one, and they both work the same way, folks, so, you know, don't get worried, don't get freaked out on me, but in version number one, we can have what we call a pure addition, which is just one type of alkene, and that is it. That's all that we have in the reaction vessel, and I can add the organic to it, and that organic uh, metallic uh, catalyst is going to make a reaction go forward. Perfectly okay, and it happens. The other route, option number two, is going to be a mixture. It's a mixture of two different alkenes. And the same kind of thing happens. The reaction goes forward. I still add in my metal catalyst. Uh, I still get products, but I'll get, of course, a greater number or variety of products compared to the first route. So both of these are going to be perfectly okay without an issue. Now let's talk about the metathesis.
let's talk about exactly what happens because I know you're feeling it. You're getting worried. It's at the end of the lecture module. The nerves are sweating. The sweat beats are happening on your forehead. Let's get this done before the deadline of when the assignments are due. Hurry up. You got to finish. You got to finish. I'm running out of time. Okay. I know that that kind of stuff goes on. I was a student myself at one point in time. I know. Don't have to lie to me. So what exactly happens here? Well, let me show you. Let's say that we have a double bond, and on this side we have a methyl group, and on this side we have an ethyl group. Okay, what would be this name? Let's use our rules for chemistry. 251, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, pent. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, pentene. The shampoo. No, okay. So carbon 2 is where that ene is at. So 2-pentene would be the name of this alkene. They're going to expect you to know that, folks. You know, some of these problems are going to give you names of the alkenes, and you're going to have to be able to draw those comfortably because this is something that you should already know how to do in Orgo 2. I mean, if your instructor did the right thing, you should at least, one, know what an alkene is. If not, we've got bigger problems in hand. And then number two, you've got to know how to name it. And sometimes we forget the little rules and stuff. So if you forget the little rules, no big deal. But at least I hope that you've seen how to name an alkene. Because if you've not, then you need to ask for tuition money back. Get a refund. Take your receipt back. All right, so 2-pentene, there's the molecule. We're going to react this with a metallic organic okay well the metallic organic I'm not going to really talk about yet we're going to focus on that in just a second so I'm just going to put an M here M means metal we talked about that in the very beginning of the lecture videos so what metathesis basically means is that we're going to come in here and we're going to cut that bond in half. So what we would have is this piece, three carbons on that side with half, right? Think of that as the half. And then over here, we've got those two carbons, and there's the other half of the double bond. So the way I want you to envision metathesis is targeting that double bond like this, and snapping it, crack, in half. And now I have these two pieces. Well, the thing that you need to keep in mind is that there's more than one little molecule of 2-pentene in that boiling flask. All right, when you go into a lab, when you work with these things, when you synthesize with these things, there is more than just one. All right, so I'm going to do another molecule of this stuff down here. And I'm going to snap it just like before. There's no difference. No difference. It's the same molecule. It should snap in the same way, right? Bend and snap. Now the metathesis is going to set in. This metal catalyst is going to allow this to happen. And then these fragments, that's really kind of what they are. The fragments are released. And these fragments are then going to be glued back together. And sometimes matchmaker... Matchmaker, matchmaker, make me a match. We'll go back to the same way that they were before. And one of those versions would give me the same exact reagent that we started with. So carbon, 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 double bond, carbon, carbon. Okay, well, it cleans up that mess. Metathesis said that that could happen. No big deal. However... This piece could come around and hook it with that piece. Oh, that's what metathesis means. It puts together the fragments. So one, two, three, double bond. One, two, three. There we go. There's the connector link right there. It's where we snapped those molecules apart. All right. Well, if... This piece, matchmaker, matchmaker, goes right there. Well, folks, it's the same as what we've just drawn. That was our very first example. One, two, three, double bond, one, two. One, two, three, double bond, one, two. So that doesn't really give me anything new. Uh, but it gives me an idea that maybe, just maybe, that would be in a higher amount. Because there's two different options in order for me to get that. 
Uh, okay, well, I did kind of everything on this side. What about everything on the right-hand side? Well, this little piece can matchmaker, matchmaker, pair up with that one. It gives me the same thing as before. We've already taken care of that. And this piece can come down here, and it can go matchmaker, matchmaker, and it gives me the same thing, three and two. So nothing new there. We've already taken account for it. And then that piece can join up with this piece. And we do get something new here. We get a carbon, carbon, double bond, carbon, carbon. So the problem with metathesis is that there's really just no control. Unless I'm choosing my compounds wisely, if I'm just dumping them into the flask and I'm adding this metal catalyst, all of these possibilities begin to exist. And I can get more than one type of product that comes from these reactions. And that's really the problem with metathesis. It's kind of figuring out all of the choices and all of the possibilities that can go on. But to be honest, they keep these questions very simple. They don't give you crazy molecules that come around and want you to break them apart. They might try to throw a curveball every now and then, but for the most part, they keep it to the basics. Again, on a garden. They keep it to the basics on the Food Network channel. All right, so this is metathesis. This is the idea of metathesis. You're going to eh, 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 the bonds. You get the fragments, shatter them into the pieces, and then matchmaker, matchmaker, make me a match. That's what basically happens on these reactions. Okay, so there is an example of what goes on. And once more, all of these different types of uh, possibilities can exist, and they will go forward. So what you're seeing here on the screen is one of the ways uh, that they begin to give you this. All right. So here is a double bond, and these are red prongs. And then here's a different molecule with blue prongs. And this is just their way to say, listen, these alkenes can be different. I mean, that's not a big deal. So we eh, eh, that bond and we eh, eh, that bond and we can take this piece and glue it back up to the red one we get the same thing that's not really a different product we can take this piece and glue it up to the blue one it's the same thing it's not really a different product uh, or we can take a red piece and a blue piece and we can glue these two things together and we get a different type of molecule that forms because of that. So that's just their way of basically saying, hey, here's the roundabout idea of metathesis. It shouldn't be any more complicated than this. You break that double bond in half. That basically sets up the sites of attachment for these fragments to come back together. All right, now, I told you M, metal. Let's talk about what that M means. All right, so the M is going to be named after a man, of course, that kind of designed this organometallic reaction and kind of reported on it the first time. But this particular metal is a ruthenium metal. Ruthenium. Okay, so ruthenium is one of those metals on the periodic table that a lot of people do not gravitate toward. It's kind of a weird thing that we never really talk about it. It was never mentioned in general chemistry. It's rarely mentioned in organic chemistry. So why not do some research on it? And why not report some data on it? Because not a lot of people do anything with it. And then it's very easy breaking news category that begins to happen in a research lab. So they send the research off and they get a Nobel Prize. Okay, money in the bank. There we go. Okay, that's kind of what happens, right? I mean, this was the same concept back, you know, 100 years ago when they were talking about conductivity. I mean, we know that we can put salt into water and two ions break apart in A plus and Cl minus. And we know that that can conduct, all right, well, there's someone at some point in time that had to do research and submit it, and they were acknowledged for that research. I know it seems simple to us now, but back then it wasn't. So this ruthenium metal is fairly new. We don't use it a lot, and we're going to name it after the guy that basically did some of these studies, and his last name was Grubbs. I think of little grubby worms. So we tend to call this the grub catalyst. That's why. We don't call it the ruthenium coupling. 
No, that's not what we do. We just call it grubs. Very similar to Suzuki or heck. I mean, you know, that's the kind of thing that we do. So yet another name, yet another reaction. It's metathesis at the heart, but they're going to call it, these compounds undergo a Grubbs reaction. Please write the following products that you might see or encounter. I mean, you know how they write these questions? That's what it's going to be. So Grubbs, Suzuki, Heck, Gilman, Grignard. Whoa. I mean, welcome to the family, folks. It's like a family reunion of organometallics here. Where's the picnic and where's the hot dogs? And if you use charcoal, make sure that you don't put the meat directly on the charcoal grill because if you do, there's cancer-causing agents in it that can be benzoapyrene. We just learned that back in or, uh, the Organic One lecture, right? I mean, we just learned that back in Alcohols, Module 1. It all comes back. It all comes back. I told you. That's how it works. Okay, well, Mr. Grubbs, he was from Kentucky, probably close to my hometown, and he lived in a place called Possum Trot. Folks, I can't make this up. I can't make this up. Do I know where Possum Trot is? No, I can say I've never been to Possum Trot, Kentucky. I've seen possums, but I've never been to Possum Trot, Kentucky. But that's where he was born and raised and reared. You raise corn, you rear kids. And you probably beat their rear ends, too, when they get out of hand. But that's that's a different kind of story. So the Grubbs catalyst is going to be thrown in to this reaction mixture. The Grubbs catalyst is going to be ruthenium. And that ruthenium is going to do the job that we just discussed. It basically takes the alkane, chops it directly in half. You free up these fragments, and these fragments come together. Well, this does have a mechanism. Guess what? No mechanism. Oh, I love this lecture already. No curvy arrows again. So we've not really dealt with curvy arrows this entire time. Pretty good news. Less that we have to remember. We know the mechanism. We know a large portion of the mechanism, but it's not something that we're going to ask you to actually draw curvy arrows for and memorize. Okay, they're very similar to Heck and very similar to Suzuki. Uh, this is what we are going to call a 2 plus 2 cyclo addition. That's how this mechanism works. Uh, again, just kind of an FYI information. But once more, we're not going to be required to memorize a mechanism like this. So the formal name is a 2 plus 2 cyclo addition. The Grubbs catalyst. What does this thing look like? Well, here's the Grubb catalyst. So I see the ruthenium. My ruthenium is right here. What do you think these L's stand for? <laughs> oh, I hope you know the L's will stand for ligands. And there's tons of different choices that I can put onto this thing. They're all really referred to as the Grubb Catalyst. If you do that, it's not a big deal. So you do have some play and you do have some wiggle room as far as the ligands are concerned. This ruthenium will also have two chlorines off of it. Now look at this. Two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate ruthenium? Right? Okay, well, this is over the octet. That's perfectly fine. General chemistry lies to you. Organic chemistry, when we first started off this journey together, we lied to you again because we said octet, 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 octet. Everything has to have eight. No, that's a lie. Not everything has to have eight. The majority of things in the first two rows have to have eight, but everything else can have more than that. Ruthenium is one of those because, look, we have one, two, three, four, five. Look, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's how many bonds ruthenium has. Very strange to people when they first see it because they're like, that can't be true. There's not eight. Well, they're not supposed to be eight. Ruthenium is fairly large. It's a transition. It's a metal, right? So this very large atom can take on more bonds. Perfectly okay with it. Not a big deal. You got to remember, these bonds are not sticks, these bonds are going to be electrons. They're sharing electrons. They're not sharing sticks. I know that we keep saying the bonds will break, almost like a stick, but 
it's not really a line that connects them. There's not a bar that will connect the carbon and the ruthenium together. It's a set of electrons that bring them near to each other. So this is the Grubbs catalyst. So the two chlorines are a half two, all right? The ruthenium is a half two. This double bond is a half two. And then this CH on a benzene ring is a half two. That is the definition of the Grubbs catalyst. And what you do have the freedom to change are the L groups that are right there. Different things, different ways of doing it. A lot of times it's just playing around and seeing what works and what works the best and what doesn't work for whatever purpose that you bring to the table. But, folks, this is what we call the Grubbs Catalyst. So up here in the top left-hand or right-hand corner, you're going to see that template and you're going to see that model. First thing, this pH. The pH is going to stand for phenyl. We really haven't talked about that that much. P-H-E-N-Y-L. This is coming. All right, it's coming in a different lecture module, but P-H-E-N-Y-L, phenyl. And then down here is that representation. It's basically a benzene ring. It's a ring, a six-membered ring with delocalization, double, single, double, single, double, all the way around. So that is phenyl in organic chemistry. Uh, that has a carbon that's right there, so we see that. A double bond ruthenium, a double bond ruthenium, and then off of that ruthenium are two chlorines, so one in front and one behind. They're giving me an idea of stereochemistry right there. And then the L groups that they have decided to use is this phosphorus with the cyclo groups, and there's three of them. So think of this as like the triphenylphosphine that we talked about in the very early beginnings of the lecture. All right, so this is just their choice of using it. Uh, again, the L groups can change and, and they can get modified. Not a big problem, but they're out there, and all those choices do exist. Uh, so you just got to be okay with that. But we're going to just call it grubs. We're not even going to write ruthenium. We're not going to even write RU like we did with palladium. We're just going to call it grubs and that's it. All right, so let's take a look at an example. Let's do CH3, CH, double bond, CH and CH3. Okay. All right. We're going to take this and we're going to react with grubs from Possum Trot, Kentucky. What happens? All right, so I'm going to take this molecule and I'm going to ee, 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 cleave it in half. So CH3, CH double bond, and then CH double bond and CH3. Okay. Well, if there's one molecule that does it, there's going to be another molecule around that's going to do it. I just have to assume that. So I'll write down a second choice. Sometimes they'll write a two up here in front, just so that you know that it's okay. It's okay to write down a second. So let's connect the pieces. All right. To do this, We'll take this piece and yeah, matchmaker, matchmaker, uh, we end up with what we started with. So that's not really a product, is it? No, that's not a product. All right, well, we'll start with this piece and we're yeah, down here. Now, if those two come together, that's basically what we started with. So that's not really a product. No, that's not a product. Okay, well, this one and matchmaker. Well, if those two come together, it's still what we started with. Four carbon chain with the double bond in the middle. So that's not really a product. And folks, no matter how I matchmaker, matchmaker, make me a match it, I'm going to end up with the same product. So in this reaction, if I throw grubs into that molecule... <laughs> Nothing. It's a Debbie Downer moment. That Debbie Downer moment means no product's going to happen. Uh, Grubbs is going to go in. It can cleave those double bonds like it needs to. And those fragments will come out. But when those fragments come back together at a random chance, I am not going to get anything different than what I started with. And that's because this is a symmetrical alkene. And there's only one of the alkenes that are present. 
So I'm not going to end up with anything different. And this would be true pretty much for the majority of the symmetrical alkanes. Now, symmetrical means it's the same group on both sides. I could have three carbons on one side and three carbons on the other with the double bond in the middle. If I cut, cut that in half, I end up with identical halves. When I end up with identical halves that are no different in any form, shape, whatever, then the issue here is that grubs will not give me a product. There's no sense in using it. Nothing new is going to get formed. Okay, so there's one lesson of grubs. So let's not use a symmetrical alkane. Right, And this we kind of already done, but I'll just shift the double bond on you a little bit. And we'll do it here. Okay, so this carbon's got four bonds in total. The carbon next to that one, two from the carbon, one to the other carbon, one to the hydrogen. There's four bonds. Everything else has four bonds too. It's a pretty satisfied alkene. And if I had to name this alkene, that is one, two, three, four, five. And this is one pentene. So I'm going to take one pentene and I'm going to add grubs. What forms? All right. So I'll take my reagent. And I'll e -e 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 the bond. And that's what I get there. And they're going to put a two maybe up in front, two moles. So that gives me an idea that it's okay to do this again. Not a big deal, not an issue. And there's some of my fragments. Now these molecules will come together. Okay, well, how would they come together? Just random. Well, matchmaker, matchmaker, they can go straight across, hook back up. But if they do that, then that's going to give me the same starting reagent that I began with. So that's not really a product, is it? No, that's my reagent. So if I take this top one and I come down here and attach to that one, folks, it's the same thing. It's the same molecule that I started with. There is no difference. So that's not really a product there. Well, if I take this and circle it around, that is something different. Oh my goodness, I get my first product here. So I'm going to write it down at the bottom. So CH3, CH2, CH, oh gosh, what happened there? Look, I got so excited talking about this grub product that I just shifted my whole notepad. See what organic can do to people? All right. Oh, look, it happened again. All right, so let me center this back up. And let me get rid of that scribble. So CH3, CH2, CH2, CH double bond. And that's going to get connected to that carbon with the hydrogen that had the double bond on it. And then CH2, CH2, CH3. What you need to think of is that these double bonds are not really double bonds. They're half of a double bond. Okay, that's how you need to look at these. So that way, when they come together, you're not trying to write two double bonds in there. That's not how this works. It's half of a double bond and half of a double bond. That's the way that you need to think about how these pieces get glued together. So when the two halves come together, it makes the full double bond that we see in that particular structure. All right, so there's one matchmaker that we have done successfully. Okay, now let's kind of work on the other side or down here at the bottom. If I do this again, if I take it to the top, matchmaker, matchmaker, it's the same thing that I started with. If I take this bottom to bottom, matchmaker, matchmaker, it's the same that I started with. And then if I take this piece to the top, it's the same thing that we just did. So no new pieces are coming from that section. And then if I did it again to the right-hand side, and I said, okay, we're going to start with the right-hand side. We'll go over matchmaker. It gives me the same reagent. If I go down, it gives me the same reagent. And then if I connect these two pieces together, ho, 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 we get another compound that forms. And that is different than my starting reagent that I had. All right, so there's a metathesis. Uh, the questions could say, name them. 
because we assume that you know how to name these organics at this point. They're just simple little alkanes. That's all that they are. So you should be able to name these. So this carbon chain up here at the top, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so this is an octene. And that double bond is going to happen at carbon one, carbon two, carbon three, carbon four. Or if I number from right hand to left hand, one, two, three, four, it's a tie. So it doesn't really matter. It's going to be four no matter what I do with it. So four octane will be a product. And then down here, this is a two carbon chain. So this is an ethene. And there is only one double bond between those two carbons. It's the only place that it can be. I can leave the number off. If you're just uncomfortable with that, you can think of this double bond as happening on the first carbon. So one ethene or just simply ethene. So we get ethene as a product, we get four octene as a product, and that's simply due to the fragments that get broken up when one pentene undergoes a grub catalyst. All right, so one pentene will undergo an organometallic reaction with a ruthenium complex known as grubs. Grubs or that ruthenium complex will target the double bond and the sp2 carbons of that double bond and basically cleave it into multiple fragments. Those fragments come together to generate new alkenes and those alkenes can be symmetrical or unsymmetrical. It really does not matter, but we will have an assortment of different alkenes as products most of the time. Now, that's not the only thing that grubs can do. So in the next video, we're going to pick back up from this, and we're going to look at a different type of reaction that can go on with grubs. Now, reaction is going to be kind of the same. We look at the double bonds. We can cleave them break them up into fragments and glue them back together. But if you've noticed, I've only really been focused on straight chains. But we can have rings, can't we? Of course we can. So we'll talk about grubs and the role that it plays with ring structures in the next video.